Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number nine. Number nine? Number nine? Of my favorite 30 albums of the 60s countdown, which, of course, we're doing together all month long here in September 2023, 30 days in the month. Our 30 favorite albums across all genres released in the 1960s rock, pop, Acid rock, psychedelic rock, proto metal, proto prog, jazz, fusion, avant garde, folk, whatever. It's all up for grabs here. I'm only doing one album per artist or band. You guys are free to pick as many as you want from any given artist or band, right? I'm trying to keep the playing field as wide open as possible because bands like today, uh, you know, could have had multiple albums and, uh, it's not all that fun if you do a countdown like this and all of your 30 or 31 slots are taken up by, you know, three, four, five bands, right? Yeah, we know how much we love these bands, right? But let's try to squeeze in as much stuff as we can. So this particular album, uh, it's the 11th studio album by this British band, English band, UK band. Generally speaking, it's my favorite album by them. It's released September 26, 1969. Recorded at EMI, Olympic and Trident Studios in London, England. Produced by George Martin for Apple Records. Yeah, it's got to be Abbey Road. Why I have two versions of Abbey Road? I don't know. Because it, it deserves two versions. I, you know, it's the, this is the deluxe uh, anniversary edition that came out, though, whenever, a couple years back. Here's my uh, remaster. Couldn't bring myself to get rid of this, right? Because and, and do I need to have both of these? I don't even know. I probably need to do some research. Well, why am I keeping both of these? I don't know. Then they get the new box set. That's just like it's crazy, right? Can, can you ever have enough Abbey Road? I don't know. So it's uh, it, you know this is technically the last studio album the band released while they were still together. Of course, Let It Be came out in 1970, which is comprised of stuff they were working on and other odds and ends, right? So I guess technically that's the last album released but this is the last album they released while they were a band so i guess most people count this as the final album <clears throat> however you want to look at it right there's multiple ways to look at it uh of course in the band the fab four as always john lennon on lead harmony and backing vocals guitars keyboards synthesizer right? or, or this the early days of the moog synthesizer right very early paul mccartney Vocals, lead and backing vocals, bass guitar, acoustic electric guitars, also fiddling around on the Moog and different types of percussion and sound effects and things like that. George Har uh, Harrison, uh, lead and backing vocals, all sorts of guitars, a little bit of bass, right? Did I mention Paul McCartney plays bass? For some reason, I don't remember, remember mentioning that. Well, he does, of course. One of the great bass players of all time, right? Um, all sorts of other little things Mr. Harrison was... They were all experimenting with, with this new box, this new thing called the Moog synthesizer, right? They're all fiddling around with it. Um, also does some lead vocals as well. Uh, Ringo Starr, drums and percussion, backing vocals, lead vocals on one track, plays a little anvil and some gongs and things like that. Uh, also showing up and hanging out in the studio, Mr. Billy Preston, little Hammond organ, right? Billy was uh, kind of a fixture uh, in their little group of folks around this time. George Martin, of course, the producer also contributed a little bit of keyboards and things here as well. So uh, what is on this album? You might ask, like, like anybody would need to ask what's on this album, right? Come together legendary you got uh, you know a good mixing of vocals on here between lennon mccartney and a few from harrison and you know of course one by ringo uh something arguably one of the great george harrison songs of all time something is just stunning beautiful song uh maxwell's silver garden silver hammer silver harvard <sighs> maxwell's silver hammer the garden's coming up paul song whimsical fun oh darling ah, that's so great that's a classic mccartney song right there now octopus's garden right that's the the fun silly childlike whimsical song from ringo on this particular album it's great i want you she's so heavy classic 
one of my favorite John Lennon songs. I, I love I Want You, She's So Heavy. <clears throat> so good. Over on side two, another one of George's great, great songs, Here Comes the Sun, one of the most uplifting songs ever. Uh, if you ever are feeling down in the dumps and feeling blue and you want to change that, just play Here Comes the Sun. It's the perfect antidote for uh, a bad mood or feeling depressed or hurt or angry or you know sad whatever killer song and you got uh, because one of those you know cool songs written by a couple of guys in the band you never give me your money another McCartney track also good you got Sun King another co-write from uh, Lennon Harrison and McCartney me Mr. Mustard <laughs> yeah. uh, then you got Polytheme Pam all right, some cool John Lennon tracks. Uh, she came in through the bathroom window. And then, of course, you know, and that is part of... Uh, then we have the the great three-song kind of suite here. Well, they're not, whether they were meant to be that way, I don't know. But it just... It, the, the whole back end of this album flows so well. Golden Slumbers carry that weight in the end. Ugh, so good so good you know i mean it really starts with she came in through the bathroom window and it just it, the whole album just that's i mean the melodies the the heaviness of the music although it's not heavy right it's just that the the impact of, of these tracks as they kind of take you through the back end of the album so i mean carry that weight is just uh so good so good the ringing chorus and just uh the, the way the vocals are laid out. So good. You know, there's so many cool musical bits on this album too as well, but I think the, to me, the remarkable aspect of the Beatles was always uh, the vocal interplay. You know, musicianship is stellar, of course, but I think it's the way these guys built up these verses and choruses and the way they layered the vocals and all the distinct vocal styles, right? It just works so, so well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know, Her Majesty at the very end, you know, very tail end. So, uh, all right, Jesus, charting positions, uh, and I've got loads of stuff for all the various reissues and things. I don't know if I'm going to spend time going through everything, but here we go. Uh, original release, all right, when the album first came out, I see a lot of similarities here. Austri all right, put it to you this way, they're all number one, except if I say they're not number one. Australia. Canada, Dutch charts, Finland, Italy, Japan made it to number three, Norway, Sweden, Spain, UK, US, West Germany, all number one. All right, in uh, 2009, which is probably um, this one, yeah, if that's with this remaster, the, the, the whole set of remasters. Australia, number 12. Austria, 36. Belgium, 20. Uh, <clears throat> Danish charts, 18. Finnish charts, 12. Germany, 41. Italy, 7. Japan, 12. Mexico, 8. Portugal, 4. Spain, 13. Sweden, 6. Swiss, 28. New Zealand, 8. UK, 6. US Billboard, number 3. And uh, in 2019, that was with this reissue, once again, uh, Australia, number two, Belgium, number one, Canada, number three, Czech album charts, number 23, Danish charts, number three, Dutch charts, number one, Finland, 13, Germany, 12, I'm sorry, two, Greece, number one, Hungary, 34, Ireland, number three, Italy, number three, Mexico, number five, New Zealand, number six, Norway, number two, Poland, 16, Portugal, one, Scotland, one, Spain, one, Sweden, four, Swiss, three, UK, number one, and US Billboard, number three, for the regular album charts, but on the rock album charts, number one. Pretty remarkable, right? Uh, as far as uh, certifications, I'm sure this is going to be crazy here. Oh, and there's even more charting stuff on very when this album popped back in again. I'm not going to go through all of it because it's just like it's, it's tons of it. Um, but certifications: uh, Argentina Diamond, 500,000 units sold plus. Australia three times platinum, 210,000 copies. Belgium platinum, 50,000. Brazil 390,000. Canada Diamond, one million copies sold. 
Uh, Denmark, three times platinum, 60,000. France, gold, 100,000. Germany, platinum, 500,000. Italy, double platinum, 100,000. Sal, man, the Beatles are killing it in Italy. Japan, 655,000 units sold. New Zealand, five times platinum, 75,000 units sold. The UK, eight times platinum, 2.4 million. In the United States, 12 times platinum, 12 million copies sold. Worldwide, this is just a reissue in 2019. So that's this bad boy right here. 800,000 units sold and uh, worldwide sales up to the last certification in 2014. 31 million copies sold of Abbey Road worldwide. That's of the last certifications. That's almost 10 years ago. Do you think another 5 million copies have sold since then? Wouldn't be surprised. Would not be surprised. Um, yeah, and uh, do I have anything else I can share with you on this wonderful album, which perhaps for many people might even rank higher than mine? Uh, Something with Come Together on the flip side, released October 6th, 1969. So there you have it. Some factoids and things about uh, the great Abbey Road from the Beatles. Yeah, it's my number nine. Number nine number nine I, I didn't work it out that way it just this morning when i was getting ready to tape i realized I, I always want to remember what number these come in at so i said oh it's that number nine and i'm like oh and it's the beatles for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about you don't catch that number nine reference well that's beatles fans know what i'm talking about um anyway uh Tune in tomorrow for pick number eight. You're probably thinking, well, what, what could possibly rank higher than the Beatles and Abbey Road on this countdown? Well, I just got to have to wait and see. If you know me, I think you kind of know which ones are coming, right? There's a lot of good stuff, a lot of great stuff coming. And this is a great album too, right? But there's eight that I like just a little bit more, right? As legendary and great as this is, there's eight that I like more. So tune in tomorrow for number eight uh, as we count our way down towards number one before we move back to the 70s for one last month and talk about our favorite albums overall from the 70s across every single music genre, right? Everything is up for grabs. That's coming up starting on October 1st, which is not too far off. Till then, visit us on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for all your support there. We also have the Cameo link down, before, down below if you want me to make a personalized video for you. I can certainly do that. That's down there as well. And uh, we will see you in just a little bit. Martin Popoff coming into the Funhouse. As always, for Friday morning at the Funhouse, we've got a, a cool topic today. We're going to be talking about, oh, these bands and artists over the years. We're going to be talking about 10 of them who were mega and created all sorts of mania worldwide, right? Who are they? Why did they achieve that kind of status? That's what we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. Also, by the way, that, that I meant to say it just before, if you haven't already picked up your version, or your version, your size of our brand new UK Connection shirt, it is awesome. There we go. There you have the whole thing. Because we love to talk about beer as well on the UK Connection. It's kind of set up like a beer label. All right, we got Simon, Stephen, and myself. Our names are on there. Great music, great beer, the UK Connection every other Saturday. It's coming up this Saturday as well. Stay tuned for that. Uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we've also got a little bit later on today, we got uh, Ken Golden and the Professor's Picks. New release day, right? We're talking about new new albums that are coming out today that are available for you to check out. Uh, like I said, UK Connection coming up tomorrow. And, uh, <clears throat> and in fact, during the UK Connection, we're actually talking about those killer or really good final albums. All right, so those those last albums from bands or artists that are no more, right? They're neither the band is completely done or the artist is no longer with us, and that last album was actually really damn good. It doesn't have to be their best album, but it's really really strong because some bands and artists don't go out on a high note; they go out with a whimper. These are the ones that went out on a high note. But don't you worry, we will be doing an episode where those bands do go out with a whimper. That's coming up in a couple of weeks, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, what else we got tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow, Sunday. 
ranking the albums. Karen La Preziosa from It's All About the Fuzz and the Hudson Valley Squares will be joining me to rank the catalog of the great Japanese doom band Church of Misery. So stay tuned for that and uh, lots more here on the channel, right? Also got another fun program this weekend. We've got Scott Laid from the Prague Corner and Tim Durling from Tim's Vinyl Confessions are joining me for a fun program where we talk about how legit are the U.S. prog bands from the 70s, right? Get so many people talk about it on the channel who are not from the U.S. and they're like, ah, the only real prog bands were from the U.K. Well, we kind of disagree. Three guys here from the U.S., right? or from North America, I should say, and uh, we are going to talk about why we feel some of those prog bands from the uh, 70s and early 80s here that came from here in the U.S. were absolutely legit and were really great as well. So that's coming up also this weekend. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.